Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another post-game show here at the Hockey Bears YouTube channel. For the last time, covering the Edmonton Oilers Colorado Avalanche series. The Avalanche have won it. They are going to the Stanley Cup final for the first time since 2001, which is insane that they've been on such a good team for so, you know, and they haven't been here since 2001. Um, so it's been a while. So now they're in the Stanley Cup final. Uh, Edmonton Oilers get swept. And after, I mean, an insane run with some insane performances from some really great players. So, I mean, um, Full props to those guys, but uh, I've got Carrie and Jim joining me again here on the post game show. Um, we'll start with uh, we'll start with you, Jim, on uh, Edmonton Oilers in this game. Uh, what do you think? Um, takeaways from this final game? Um, put up a fight, but uh, ended up uh, getting swept. Sure. I mean, let's first things first. Give credit to Colorado for the yes. entire series. I mean, they were really good. Um, I didn't think the Oilers were terrible for most of this. I know that a bunch of the comments on our videos are calling us Edmonton Oilers homers. And that's totally okay by, by me in saying that I thought they didn't play terrible hockey. Uh, Colorado was just better. So credit to them. Um, I'll say mix of both, right? For the Oilers. I thought they showed up with a lot of heart tonight. I thought they were banged up. It'd be easy to make excuses with no Evander Kane, no Kyler Yamamoto, Jesse Pugliarvi went down easy and pretty quickly, although he did come back dry settle, can't even be 50%. Um, they had a lot against them tonight in an elimination game. I thought they'd be able to pull it out. They really, really battled. Uh, but on the other side of that coin, they Colorado was good, but Edmonton 50, 50, they do this to themselves, right? They let mm -hmm. two, two goal leads slip away. And uh, Mike Smith, he's going to get torched online. It's going to happen. Yes. I thought he was decent, but he made, he made another Mike Smithism, right? He played that puck when he shouldn't have. I know people will argue that Linus got goal shouldn't have counted. I'll know they'll argue the overtime goal probably shouldn't have counted, but um, Mike Smith didn't even need to put them in that position. He did not need to play the puck at that time uh, or try to toss it into a crowded area. Just didn't need it. Right. So hmm. Oilers battled hard. They tried. I thought they might be able to pull it out. Uh, Colorado played well. Edmonton shot themselves in the foot again. So that was the story of the series for me was that, you have a combination of Colorado doing things to the Oilers, the other two teams, Calgary and Los Angeles couldn't do. And then the Oilers not helping themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. That was the story of the series for me. Well, I mean, you know, he put up some great performances. All the stars came to play in this game. Uh, Zach Hyman had a couple more goals. He had uh, finished this, this series or this playoffs with 11, which is pretty good. Uh, you know, Dry side, another four assists on basically one leg. Uh, it seemed like uh, he was limping off the ice almost every time they had the camera on him leaving. Um, you know, the guys put up a fight, uh, but you know, Kerry on the other side, Colorado, like, like Jim said, full props to them. They, you know, battled back and from two, two goal deficits and we know they can score goals and uh, some of the key performances. So um, what'd you feel, think about this game and Colorado going to the Stanley cup final for the first time, uh, like, you know, in a long time. Yeah, because I when it's three to one going into the third, the biggest goal of the game for me anyway was that Taves goal, boom, 30 seconds into the third period, because then all of a sudden it was like, uh oh, here they come, you know, mm -hmm. and Hyman gets it right back and then the lid blows off the top and six goals get scored in the period. <laughs> but the biggest thing from this game and the last game is uh, uh, the big guns showed up. I mean, Kale McCarr, five points. Man, McKinnon scores a big goal. Uh, I think Landis got get a goal and two assists. You know, uh, Miko Rantanen scored. It was a guy that we talked about, you know, he only had an empty netter going into the series, all that stuff, and he's been big. And that goal that he scored was as, you know, as big as it gets. I mean, puts him up five to four with about five minutes left. Uh, Cassian scores the tied up. But, <laughs> I mean, that's a huge goal from – essentially his office that's his spot on the power play that's where he scores 99 percent of his goals on the power play is in that right circle and he just got one pass so I mean this was different than the elimination game that they had against the Blues where you felt like it was going to be the same where it's like oh man they came back took the lead then they blew it again and now they're going to blow it in overtime but um yeah the big guys came up for Colorado and boy they're uh they're clicking right now for sure. <laughs> well, they, I mean, the guys uh, on the broadcast were raving about Kale McCarr and why not? This guy has been amazing um, throughout since he started in the NHL way back, what, two years ago in the playoffs. 
and he was really good there. Gets five points. Um, they were comparing him to, uh, you know, to Bobby Orr, and that's a big comparison. Uh, and, you know, the way he's played, and he's like, like Bieksa said, he's not just straight of offensive defenseman. Uh, he's, he's a complete defenseman. And I know in the past I compared him to, you know, Quinn Hughes and Kale McCarr. I think McCarr is a way better defenseman. I mean, he's just so much more complete. Hughes is getting there, but that's another discussion. So what do you think about McCarr's performance in this, uh, not just in this game, but in the playoffs so far here? Yeah, he's been lights out. I mean, he played just about 30 minutes tonight and (laughs) which, (laughs) and and it was so back and forth. The, like the, the pace was high. They, especially that third period, the action was pretty heavy and stuff. And he just never didn't seem like he ever came off the ice. And I don't know. I, was like, if, I don't know if you can take him <laughs> off the ice in a game like this. He was, it just seemed like he was everywhere. I mean, he had 10 points in that first series had to, you know, stay back a little bit more against St. Louis, but uh, it just seemed like he really grabbed control of this game once they got into that third period. And it, I mean, it was back and forth. I mean, six goals <laughs> scored in that period, yes. but it's like, for him, it just seemed like he was in the middle of everything, and he just delivered over and over and over again in that third period from Taves' first goal to, I mean, I think he assisted on the game winner too. So it's, I mean, it's, I, I mean, that's, I scored the first one, assisted on the last <laughs> one, and it was, I, I mean, he was just in the thick of it when they needed it, you know, to shut, uh, you know, to shut a team down and finish off a series I mean, that guy just stepped up and it, that was the only guy that had a bigger game than him was Leon Dreisaitl, which mm. was just absolutely, I just think Dreisaitl's performance was, was bonkers, but Kale McCarr was, he was, he was their best player tonight. And he was, I mean, he was, he's been awesome throughout this whole series, mm. but he was really, really a difference maker tonight. Well, he's only 23 and two. I mean, he's it's only going to get better, which is insane. And the same thing with, you can say that about dry side on McDavid all, then they're all going to get better. I mean, how can they get better? <laughs> so it's, it's going to be insane to watch these guys moving forward. I, uh, Jim uh, on the other side, I mean, Connor McDavid, Leon dry they both stepped up in this elimination game. Um, both had big games, but like, you know, like Kerry said, dry Um, What do you think? I mean, we're probably going to find out this guy has been severely hurt uh, after, you know, tomorrow, but talk about his um, resilience. I mean, to play on basically like one leg in this whole, pretty much this whole series. Yeah. Well, not just this series, like, well, before. Yeah. Like it happened (laughs) against Los Angeles, right? Like he was, I think he was hurt, banged up going in. And then early on in that series with Los Angeles and he gets taken down, you knew something was wrong. And he, doesn't practice with the Oilers for the most part because he can't. And he comes out and he plays every game. Um, I thought Kale McCarr was fantastic, but like mm-hmm. Kerry said, Dreisaitl is on that sort of like, we got to be talking about his performance because yeah, he just fought through whatever. Doesn't complain. Doesn't he says, I'm fine. You know, he's not um, mm-hmm. was, this was the most I've seen him in pain. Like, yeah, you know, he's hurt, but he's able to sort of just go, okay, well, how hurt because you can't really tell but he's right tonight you knew tonight you could see every every play he would fall down he would barely get back to the bench and he would sit there and he would wince for a while then he's coming out right he had four primary assists tonight and all nice plays like this the ability to do that and if we're like i know there was a lot of conversation about Connor mcdavid possibly winning the con smith without even making the final <laughs> i think uh there's going to be somebody else who wins it just because of that but like gets in there and plays the final and does really well but I think Leon Drysaddle's performance is one of the reasons why you don't give it to Connor McDavid. Because if you look at this, their stats at the end of their playoff series between the three teams that they played, they were pretty close. Like yeah. Drysaddle and McDavid were very, very close. Like McDavid looked dangerous a lot and he was lights out sometimes. But Drysaddle is just the sneaky point producer. That guy is unbelievably consistent. Uh, he didn't score a lot uh, in this series simply because I don't think he could get everything on his shot. But uh, man, oh man, was he good. So yeah, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if tomorrow we hear that he's going for some sort of surgery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and like, well, you know, the last performance I kind of go back to um, in recent memory for me uh, is Steve Eiserman when he played on basically one knee 
or won, you know, and won the cup and played on that for almost the whole, whole time. Um, that kind of brought that back for me. So, I mean, that it's insane how much injuries these guys play with and, you know, they just don't want to get off the ice and they can still perform at a high level, which is insane to me. Um, you know, Carrie, we were talking in the last post game about who, how are they going to replace um, Nazem Kadri? Um, you know, they had a pretty good performance without him. <laughs> uh, Who do you feel kind of stepped up the most without him in the lineup? I mean, face-offs, you look at the face-offs, it wasn't very good. I mean, you know, because he's out, Branton, I think, stepped in as taking draws. Um, what do you think without Kadri, how they kind of filled it in without him? Yeah, it, I mean, Lekkonen was awesome in this game. I mean, he scored the game winner, had, yeah. I think he had a couple assists. I, I thought he was great in this game. Um, we talked sort of about uh, sort of about JT Comfer, but he didn't really, you know, generate that much, you know, offense when, you know, and then Andre Burakovsky gets popped up mm-hmm. too, and, you know, he gets hurt because he keeps blocking shots, <laughs> you know, right away. But it just seemed like, as a group, you know, there, those big three just sort of said, okay, let's, you know, let's take over. You had uh, Kale McCarr doing his thing, but I mean, Landis Gog in particular and McKinnon, they were in the thick of everything. Landis Gog was awesome. Um, some of those other guys, I mean, in the third period, Darren Helm was actually, you know, pretty mm-hmm. good through the first couple of periods. And then it just seemed like, all right, we're rolling two lines for like the last 20 <laughs> yeah. minutes. But um, I just think Lekkonen was the guy that really, you know, stepped up for that depth scoring when they really needed it. I mean, all of the big guns scored the rest of the goals, but he was just right there causing trouble too. But it just, it's going to be interesting to see how long he's out. Uh, You know, some places said, oh, he's done for the whole postseason. Some places said, oh, he's just done for this series. It's going to be interesting to see, but they're going to need more than that. I know that they kind of moved Ranton into center a couple of times too. Uh, I just don't know how much longer they can get by, you know, living like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that's a lot of pressure on a guy, you know, especially, I mean, they lose a big face-off guy when they, they're shaky on face-offs. They have been all year and Kadri's, you know, been one, you pretty good face-off guy his whole career so that's a big that's a big loss there it's that's where he's really difficult to replace and then you add in the scoring and all that stuff but um I just thought that the top guys were great and then Lekkonen was the guy that really stepped up in this game for them when they needed somebody yeah and, and Lekkonen well he scored the Stanley the one to bring Montreal to the Stanley Cup final uh last year Brings Colorado <laughs> this year so I mean he he's been a huge like we talked about the guys that sack it added at the deadline and he's been a major um contributor being one of those acquisitions and um you know cogliano has been good all the you know most of the playoffs here too and uh blocked a shot and uh, had to leave i'm pretty sure he actually did he come back i can't remember if he did actually no, come back he, in the game after i think that. he came back to shake hands and that was it yeah. and he wasn't <laughs> using that right hand either then so <laughs> but i mean so, yeah, guys uh, cogliano has been good when he's played josh manson's been great throughout the last two series um whether it's blocking shots or scoring a timely goal uh you know just upping that offense a little bit that that's not something they expected from him at all so yeah, yeah those guys that uh Sackick brought in Looking like a genius so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jim, going on the other side again here, and as we keep you know wrapping up the Oilers playoffs here, um, they inserted Dylan Holloway. He played his first ever NHL game in the playoffs, only played three minutes. Um, what did you think of his performance in the time you did see him? Um, I mean, again, three minutes is not a lot to kind of gauge, but – how do you think of his performance and, and the decision to bring him in into this uh, game? Well, I mean, what can, what do you say about a guy who played three minutes? I mean, he was yeah. slotted to be in the top six, right? He was supposed to be on the second line and he played one shift there. Right. And then never saw really the ice again after he happened to be on the, the ice for one of the goals. I uh, still even, but like, you can't judge that based on that. I don't, I don't know why they chose to put him in there, to be honest with you. If they were only going to play him three minutes, I get the idea that you don't want to put a rookie in a situation. The game is close. You're fighting for your life. Mm-hmm. If it's on him, then it's a really bad look. Like I get all that. 
But if you're really that worried about it, unless they saw something early that they just didn't like, and they thought maybe he was out of position or they didn't think he was going to be able to keep up to the pace and the speed of the game. Uh, I don't know why you even do it. Why even dress him? Mm. Right. Cause he just didn't play. And that's um, I'm not saying that the guys who played in his place where they're juggling, you know, you're missing so many people, right? Like yeah. you're missing Yamamoto. You're missing Evander Kane. Jesse Pugliarvi goes down quickly, uh, misses a good chunk of the game. Now you're not playing Holloway. I mean, you're missing a number of your key forwards. You should think that you'd give him an opportunity to do something, to generate some kind mm-hmm. of offense. And they just didn't. So uh, I get it. It's an elimination game, but there's no way to know uh, what to make of his performance. It's just too little uh, ice time yeah. to even judge anything. I I didn't think he looked terribly out of position to me, but at the same time, how do you know that based on one or two shifts? Yeah, three minutes is not nothing at all. And uh, I mean, what they did, I mean, yeah, Pooley Arby started on the top line, um, but Hyman got bumped up there and that's when all of a sudden started scoring and Hyman gets another two goals. I mentioned on the podcast this morning that I thought uh, Hyman should be put on the top line right away. Well, he was basically on the top line all game. Um, what'd you think about Hyman again uh, this in this game and how he did during the playoffs? Again, here's another addition uh, to a team this year that had a big impact in the playoffs. Yeah, he was a he was a warrior. Uh, we talk about guys fighting through stuff. He certainly did. He didn't have any major injuries to speak of, but he was beaten on a lot. Like he took cross checks and he was hit, and you could tell he was sore uh, a couple times tonight. He was like, "Ooh, that didn't look good." He got a knee on knee yeah. at one point, and he still stayed yeah. in there. Like he just fights through it, right? He's a battler. There's going to be a lot of people talking about. Here's the downer for me. Like, yeah, they're out of it, right? It sucks, but uh, the downer is they got swept. And so what's mm-hmm. going to happen here is you're going to look at the first series and the second series and be like, oh my gosh, that was so great. And then you're going to look at this series and go, oh my God, the others suck, right? That's going to be the reaction from <laughs> a lot of people is that this team needs to be changed, blah, blah, blah. And it doesn't. It's They got to the third round of the Stanley Cup playoff. They came up against a very, very good team yeah. and they happened to lose in four games, right? They did a lot of things to themselves that they didn't necessarily need to do, but they got beat by a better team. Um, yeah. But there are going to be some people here that are going to get railroaded. You know, Mike Smith's going to be one of them. Um, even Jesse Pugliarvi who coughed one up in the middle of the, he got back on the ice after a long time of sitting and he coughed one right up. Like there's going to be a lot of people. Darnell nurse is going to take a hit here. The one guy who won't for sure, Zach Hyman, he mm-hmm. was so solid all year long and all through the playoffs that everybody who was even remotely like, Oh my God, they gave him too much money and too long a term probably aren't saying anything right now. Right. Cause he was so solid and so steady and one of the most reliable guys even when the rest of the team wasn't always playing wonderful, he was playing pretty solid hockey. So uh, yeah, Zach Hyman was, was a real key takeaway for me in this series, even though it didn't go the other way. Yeah. He's been, he was really impressive. And the thing is he's has that chemistry with McDavid and dry So, you know, he goes up there and he gets a couple goals. And so, I mean, yeah, he's, he was really good uh, throughout the playoffs and, um, you know, like the bottom, you know, the lines like Warren Fogel's line was really good in this game. He had eight hits in the game. Um, probably the best I've seen him when I've watched the Oilers. Yeah. I, you know, I think this is the best I've seen Warren Fogel. Um, didn't score. He, but, he may have saved but, uh, his job tonight. Yeah. I wrote, I wrote an article. I Honestly, I wrote an article on the, the hockey writers. You guys can check it out the other day. And I said, there's a couple of players I think the Oilers might have to move to make other things like signing a Vander Kane or doing other things, rounding out your defense or whatever. I don't think you want to get rid of Warren Fogle, but I think the reason they traded for him was his underlying numbers were so strong. He was a driver. He was an offensive four checker. That's what they wanted, but he didn't score a ton. He didn't do much. Mm. He, he kind of was in your face a lot, but he almost, there was half the games where he kind of wasn't very noticeable. And I thought, okay, here's a guy that you don't want to move, but you might have to move to free up some money. I think tonight showed the Oilers like, this is a guy that we got him for a reason. Right. And yeah, he didn't score and yeah, he didn't like what much at all in the playoffs, but he's pretty effective when he wants to be. And he really came to play tonight. I think he realized that this was a game that the Oilers needed him. Um, he's not a star. He's not looked at as a difference maker, but I think he played solid enough that I think the Oilers go, well, do we really want to lose that guy? I don't know what we do. <laughs> right. So he may have saved his job tonight. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. I think he's really good and probably one of the more depth guys that I really noticed uh, throughout the game. So um, definitely did a, did himself a favor. That's for sure. I yeah. uh, carry the guys that stepped up. I mean, Frank, who's I mean, there was a couple goals. You kind of is like, eh, but I mean, he did a heck of a job. They could have put Darcy Kemper into this game. I mean, he was sitting on the bench as a backup. 
So he was healthy enough to be a backup. They could have played him here, but Frank Cruz has been so good throughout these playoffs. Um, talk about how he kind of stepped up it, again. He stepped up in this game, made some pretty good saves, um, did allow five goals. But uh, what do you think about Frank Cruz? Um, not just this game, but uh, since he since he had to come in for Kemper. Yeah, I thought he was really good in the first period, and then of course the second period, the wheels fell off <laughs> a little bit. You know. Um, Really, the I mean, I thought he could have maybe saved the Hyman goal. Nugent Hopkins is kind of a breakaway. Then you got the power play goal on a great pass by McDavid. But he's going to do that. He's done that in every game where, I, you know, almost every game where he's given up kind of a softy. But usually, I don't know, the, the tonight, Kale McCarr just forgived forgave a lot of sins uh, for everybody. (laughs) So um, I think he's been good. I think they'd rather have Kemper in there, but um, you know, Kemper's been knocked out twice now. Um, Once got poked in the eye on that weird fluke play and he's, you know, Frank who's stepped in and, you know, won those last two games. And it's just been kind of, I think they look at him as like, okay, we know we don't lose that much, you know, with, Kemper goes down or if Kemper's not in there. And I think if they're not up three to one or three to nothing, if it's like two to one, if they're not up three to nothing, I bet Kemper starts this game. Mm -hmm. And that's just, I mean, my thought, but it's, yeah, it was a crazy game and he didn't really get like super frazzled even after that second period, you know, like they're down three to one, um, could you know easily easily throw your hands up in the air <laughs> and yeah. Taves gets that first goal and I think it like let him exhale a little bit if if it all of a sudden goes to four to one you know say Hyman gets that second goal before Taves scored I think it's a different story but I mean in the broadcast they were talking about taking him out going into the third period I just didn't mm. think that was going to happen I thought maybe Kemper was hey this is an emergency situation or whatever but I didn't think they were going to replace him. And I just think even with all hell breaking loose in that third period, <laughs> he wasn't that bad. You know, he was actually yeah. pretty good. And I, I mean, it's, it's a luxury to be able to have that. And I don't know if a lot of teams have that. I think Ingram was not that bad for mm-hmm. Nashville. It's just, he's no UC Soros. And yes. there's, I just don't think they lose that much when Francis is in there than when Kemper's in there. But I do think they want Kemper in there for sure. Yeah, well, we'll see. I mean, if he's healthy enough to sit as a backup, I think he starts the Stanley Cup final unless, you you know, I don't know. I, I would probably start Kemper to start the, the Stanley Cup final because he's got you there. So if he's healthy, he should be playing. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what they decide on that. Um, Jim, just to finish up, uh, thoughts on Mike Smith. I mean, we kind of talked well, on the podcast this morning. I was talking about, you know, would they play Mike Smith in this game or put Koskinen in? Do you think it was the right decision first uh, to add, to start Smith? And how do you think this final game? I mean, he had some times where he was angry with himself, like you said about that uh, giveaway. But Yeah, it, I think it was the right decision. I know the game didn't turn out the way they wanted it to. And there were times that you look at what he did tonight and you go, who it's easy to blame this game on Mike Smith. Um, But he played pretty solid for a lot of it. So, you know, it's hard to go. It's so tough with Mike Smith because for every really good thing he does, you remember something bad he shouldn't have done. Right. And sometimes guys that are super competitive, he's almost, too competitive like he's (laughs) to the point where he's so competitive he thinks that he can be a game changer and so he does things that he shouldn't probably do and then you're like why would you do that and it comes back to bite you and it comes back to haunt you and that's going to be mike smith's tale here in edmonton is that Mm -hmm. i'm assuming he'll be back next year he's got one more year on his contract and i'm assuming he played well enough the dealers think that he would make a good one b or whatever the case might be when they're all said and done here um but people are going to look at this and question it again, right? They're going to be like, really? Is this the guy we're going with? Like, Mm -hmm. even though he played really solid for a lot of the year, like the second half of the year was really, really good, especially leading into the playoffs. He probably isn't going to get a lot of credit for what he did do in the playoffs. He just has these moments where you're like, you know, they say you can do a hundred really good things and you do one bad thing. And the one thing that one bad thing is what everybody remembers. That's Mike Smith, right? (laughs) 
that's the deal. <laughs> you, you're going to remember the bad thing and you're going to forget the good stuff. And it's unfortunate, but um, I think it was the right call. They didn't win. So you can always look back <laughs> at that and go, well, maybe it wasn't, but uh, yeah, it's tough. Yeah. Well, like I said, uh, it's you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. I mean, you put Costin in and he does not go to, why didn't you put Smith in? So <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's all. Yeah. So you know, we'll see what how he bounces back and coming into next season. And like you say, he probably will be back. Um, but I mean, this Oilers team is really good. I think they don't need a lot of like big blow ups, like everyone's going to start going crazy about. But uh, um, we'll see what happens in the offseason. Um, Carrie, just to finish this up, you know, Colorado's going to Stanley Cup final. Uh, Nathan McKinnon, his first Stanley Cup final in his career. A lot of these guys, again, first time they're going to be there. Um, either going to face the Tampa Bay Lightning or the New York Rangers. Right now, it's kind of up in the air because the Tampa Bay Lightning have now become, they could get back. They've gotten back in this series, so <laughs> we don't know. Um, who do you think is the better matchup One for one? And, you know, how big is this that McKinnon's getting his first Stanley Cup final after so many years of, like, second-round failures? And um, it's pretty big for him, and he's stepped up. Yeah, I mean, I just remember him sitting in that press conference after game six against Vegas, just going, I can't remember what the question was, but he didn't even really answer it. He started to, you know, spit out the cliche answer just to try and get through the press conference. And all of a sudden he said, you know what, I'm going into my ninth year, I haven't won anything. (laughs) And it's just got, I mean, outside of a Lady Bing trophy, you know, so it was kind of like, he was just like uh, devastated with himself. and you could see in that moment that everybody was in trouble next year, (laughs) you know, and he was a little bit slow out of the gate, had some ding, you know, you know, bumps and bruises, had missed some time with COVID, all that stuff still ends up being, I think their second leading scorer. And uh, he has just been electric in the playoffs. And I just think that once that, you know, regular season ended, he just, you know, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde here. He just sort of changed, you know, put on the cape and turned it <laughs> went into his alter ego and turned into a superhero because he's been awesome. And I just think it's big for him. It's big for a guy like Gabriel Landeskog, who's been, mm-hmm. the, you know, you talk about 2001. I mean, gosh, he's been the captain for most of those years. And he's had a lot of heartache. He's dealt with a lot of crappy teams too. Mm. When Patrick Waugh was the coach. I mean, geez, he's plowed <laughs> through a lot of adversity. So to see guys like that, that's sort of what you want to see is, hey, these guys finally get their shot. And mm-hmm. it stinks when you see guys like McDavid and Dreisaitl sitting there sort of watching them celebrate after, because they're, they're in the same boat. Those are guys you mm. want to see, you know, play for the Stanley Cup too. And, but for... A guy like Nathan McKinnon and another guy like Gabriel Landeskog, it's good to see because they've just dumped everything into into the Avalanche franchise their entire career. Mm-hmm. And this has been something that's been expected for them for probably, you know, this is probably the third season in a row where people were like, hey, these guys might be the team to beat. And they finally did it. And now it'll see. As far as matchups, <laughs> man, it's tough because you look on the other side and I don't think anybody wants to play against either of those goalies and it (laughs) just seems like both of those goalies yeah Vasilevsky had the hiccup that six goals in the first game but you just never want to face off against that guy in the playoffs it's just so hard and I think they probably match up better boy I don't know I think they probably (laughs) I want to say they match up better against Tampa Bay but Tampa Bay hasn't lost a series in two year two plus years so I mean, it seems like New York's got a little bit of the jump and the speed. Um, guys like Adam Fox are, yeah. you know, going to be a pain in the neck to play against if you're Colorado. But then you look on the other side, you're dealing with Victor Hedman and Ryan McDonough. And I mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't think they care who they play. They're probably, a, you know, a better matchup against New York. Um, you know, thinking about it just off the top of my head, I haven't really looked at any numbers or anything, mm-hmm. but it's. I just think they're probably better off against New York, but it's always the be careful what you wish for, no matter who they get, it's the Stanley <laughs> cup final. And, you know, they're going to be a headache to play against. So yeah. there's no like cakewalks in the Stanley cup final. It doesn't seem like, so, <laughs> I mean, I just think they're probably better off against New York. It's just, um, 
at least you know it looks like now they got at least a few days off yes yeah <laughs> it's uh, it looks like a series again yeah because tampa bay i think is probably going to tie it um they've they're just so good at uh, coming back and they're never down so we'll see we'll see who they play it's going to be a heck of a matchup anyway um, it would have been in with either of these teams because Edmonton would have been a great matchup between those two as well. So, um, but you know, Colorado's in the Stanley Cup final, and they were pretty much the favorite most of the year as being there. So, we're get, not getting a Cinderella team. At, well, we're not going to get a Cinderella team in this uh, Stanley <laughs> Cup final because you know Rangers and uh, Tampa were kind of expected to kind of get there too. So, um, you know, we're going to have some expected matchups uh, this time. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Kerry, for come, you know, doing these post game shows uh, throughout this series. Wish it was longer because it, you know, it's fun to watch these these superstars go against each other. But it's only four games. That's a bit of a disappoint disappointing. But Colorado, Colorado will take it, I'm sure, and they're uh, in the Stanley Cup final. So thanks uh, for everyone for watching these post game shows. Uh, you know, we'll see you, Kerry, in the next series against uh, either the Rangers or the Lightning. So thanks for watching. And check out all the rest of our videos on the YouTube channel. And uh, we will see you in the next post game show.